I'm no longer at T-Corp, which means I no longer have access to the foundry. I need to make my own because I've got a project I want to try that involves melting some metal and casting it. So I need to make a foundry for myself. For the most part, I am going to be following the designs that Grant showed. So if you're interested in how to make the gas burners and how to make the foundry, you should go check out the videos that are on t -Corp. I'm gonna be making my own, and then I'm gonna show you how I use one, what I think is a pretty cool metal casting project. I think I've got all my supplies laid out. I'm gonna start by making the burners. Got a lot of little pieces that need to be fit together just right, and for the most part, I am gonna be following the, the instructions in the t -Corp video. I'm gonna change a couple things up, mostly because I have access to a belt sander and a welder, which is gonna make some of the metal working a little bit easier. But for the most part, like I said, it's gonna be about the same. Need the right drill bit for that. Ha. Right now I'm trying to get the uh, nozzle pointed perfectly straight what will be down the burner tube once it's all assembled. Not bad. So that tiny little pinprick hole is where all of the gas is going to be coming from. It doesn't take a lot, but it comes out at a high pressure and it creates a venturi effect. The spray of the propane coming out through the pipe actually pulls air in through the back and that's how we can get the right mixture of propane and air for a good hot burn. I've got the little nozzles pretty much centered nicely in the, the burners, but I don't want those to move, and because that's not a part that usually goes bad, I'm actually just gonna tack weld everything in place. So I've got the screws holding it, but instead of just being held on by screws, I'm gonna weld it. I thought about welding the pipe onto the fitting, but over time, this front fitting and even to some degree, the black pipe that feeds to it can get degraded. And so I think I'm just gonna go with tape down here and I'm not actually even gonna use any tape on the front one because at that point, there's no pressure to be holding the you know anything in with the tape. It's just gonna get screwed on like that and I'm gonna call that good. The thread tape probably isn't even necessary in this step because it does have a rubber gasket down there. This was one tube that I just cut in half. That is a mighty fine burner if I do say so myself. We've got the burners built, so now it is time to move on to the main body. Uh, we're gonna start off by making a bottom of this, and same as when I did when I was on T-Core, I've got this insulated fire brick. I'm gonna cut it in half, and then cut some corners off to make it fit at the bottom of the bucket. So that's still gonna get covered with the heat resistant cement when I mix that up, but I'm gonna put this on the bottom, then I'm gonna line the walls with the KO wool, and then I'm gonna cover all of that in the high temp cement stuff. These two bricks are cut, the corners are removed so that it fits nicely into the bottom of the pail we're gonna be using. Next up, we have to use the KO wool lining to go all the way around the bucket. Right, got the KO lining on the inside of the bucket and the lid. Now those are going to get lined with the concrete on top of all that, but last time I made one of these, I put all that in before I drilled the holes where the burners go on the sides, and that ended up causing quite a headache. So this time I'm going to drill those holes ahead of time, and I'm going to add the concrete in, and I'm just gonna build that around. So like the holes are part of it, like I've got the concrete already lining the sides of the hole. This should just be a lot better. I'm gonna have to put some holes in the lid as well. Ow! Friggin' A. Look at that nice clean hole I've got going. That's really pretty. Hmm. 
Hmm, doesn't quite fit, but obviously I don't want to leave that crazy, jagged, ragged hole. So I'm going to clean it up a bit. Might have ruined that forever. All right, time to bring out the big guns. Now I just gotta do it again on the other side. I just wanna say, so far, so good. You can see how I've started scratching the surface of it, but I haven't actually cut through anywhere for these teeth to seize onto. All right, I've got a couple of spots down here and up here where I have started to cut through. It makes sense with the shape of the bucket, that's where it's gonna be contacting the most, unless I'm tilting it a lot. I'm gonna see if I can just sort of punch it out from here. Ha! All right, that was more pleasant. So that's, that's my advice. If you're cutting through this kind of thin metal with no backing, just very slowly wear your way down, trying not to cut through until you've got it worn down everywhere. And then you can sort of break the disc off. All right, with all the holes put into all of the metal, now we can line up our kale wool, trace out where we need to cut holes in those as well. And that part should go a lot more easily than cutting the metal. Time to coat both the inside of the bucket and all parts of the lid in our high temperature concrete mix. All right, we've got everything coated. I think it went really well. I'm gonna give it about 24 hours to just dry on its own, and then I'm going to slowly start heating it up. I'll get the burners attached to some propane, start with just one burner with the gas as low as it goes, just to get warm, and I'll slowly increase the heat until I got the whole thing over the course of several hours, get up to like a nice glowing orange, and that should get it to where it's ready to actually go and be used. We've got our foundry built, we've got the burners, we've got everything in the high temperature cement, and that's been fired and ready to go. So now we are going to make the shape of our knife out of this one inch insulation foam. This stuff should burn away nicely when we pour brass onto it. And then I'm also gonna make some channels and a cup that give us a good pour spout and should hopefully make the brass flow really nicely. So I've got the actual knife, then I've got this cone at the top. That's gonna to be to help me pour all the brass into the right spot. The sand will be built right up to the edges of that. These two side pieces are just to help brass flow. So hopefully it does a better job of getting all the way down into this guard. And I've got this block down at the bottom so that the brass has somewhere to go as it flows down through the knife. I don't want it to get to the tip and get stuck. I'm gonna be pouring into dry sand, so I don't think that will be a problem, but I figure, you know, might as well just throw that down there. Gases, brass, burning styrofoam has somewhere to go rather than get stuck in the tip. Now again, I've never actually done metal casting into dry sand like this, like into styrofoam. So this is a, a big experiment for me. Let's try it. We've got the foundry, we've got the knife ready to go. So now we're going to take our brass, which in this case is bullet shells that I collected from a range. We're gonna put that in our crucible and get everything hot while it's heating up we're gonna set our knife up in the sand so that it should be all ready to pour.
Fantastic. Now we finished letting the brass melt. We'll probably have to add some more brass into that as it does melt because most of those shells are empty space. But once that's liquid, we should be able to pour it into this bucket and hopefully we get our knife cast. All right, we've got our uh, brass all melted down. Now it's time to do the pour and hope everything goes well. First test, do my tongs lift the crucible out? Happily to say, yes. Second test is gonna be the pour. I'm gonna get a little bit more protective gear on before I do that part. I'm worried about how much the sand collapsed in on it immediately. It might have blocked it off. Let's see what we get. We're gonna give that maybe 15 minutes to solidify, make sure that even the thickest parts are solid. And then I'll pull it out of the sand, whatever there is of it, and dunk it in some water. Our metal is cooled down. I'm not sure if we actually went anywhere beyond the funnel. As soon as we started pouring it in, styrofoam started collapsing and some of the sand rushed in the sides and it went right to the bottom. So let's find out if we have any knife at all. Oh, well, we got a, a decent amount of pour, but the blade, it seems, was a little too thin. Maybe, uh, maybe cutting that blade down to less than a quarter of an inch thick was not the best plan for a sand casting. Ugh. We can definitely see we poured in a couple spots where it just decided, ah, I'm gonna break out, and it just left the sand mold. We got some of our guard, some of our channels that were supposed to fill to the guard. You know what though? I think I can still make this work. I was worried that the brass was gonna be like entirely full of holes and just a low quality pour, but this is looking really nice and solid, so that is very encouraging. All right, now we're gonna start using the belt grinder. Uh, the extremely short clip point brass knife. This is entirely cast out of bullet casings. Um, and you know, it's probably not gonna catch on as like the most popular knife design, but I feel like there, there is a specific use case for a knife this size. I haven't quite figured out what that use case is yet. Let's see, is it cutting styrofoam? Hey, you know, if you just need something to score styrofoam before you cut it, this. This is gonna do you, look at that. Beautiful, right on the line. Hey, the handle's pretty comfortable with a lot of weight, so if you wanted to be able to stab something just a little bit and then really clobber it, boy, this is the tool that you need. Slightly stab, slightly slice, bash the heck out of it. Concealable, a little bit. That's a cut, that's a cut, that counts. Count it, it works. It's a knife and it can cut through paper. This sir will cut. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, I love it, I love it. All right guys, my first time trying casting brass in dry sand. I should probably make myself some green sand boxes and some green sand and start using that if I'm planning to do any more of this. I would also probably get a slightly better texture resolution pour if I, if I did something like that. Uh, lots of issues with this in terms of making a functioning knife. I think I've learned some important things about casting in dry sand and uh, this is fun. If there's anything else you'd like to see me try casting in brass, let me know. I would definitely like to do more of this, get better at it, and uh, could use your ideas. Guys, this was a ton of fun. Thank you so much for watching. And a special shout out, of course, to all of my Patreon supporters. None of this would be possible without you, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you are interested in joining those Patreon supporters, the link is down in the description. See you later.